tonight, the Mega Fix finale. One father with 34 children by 17 women. The story that became the Eon the Mega Fix. Wondering what I'm getting myself into. Did it ever dawn on you, let me get a vasectomy? No. Why not? I don't have a problem with what I created. Irresponsible. All three of y'all were pregnant at the same time. You're still sleeping with him, and he's got a two-year-old with another woman. You let a penis penetrate your friendship. Penis! I'm going to meet the kids. It's not that we missed him, it's that he's missed us. As a father, I messed up. Mr. There's J, you dropped them. They don't care why. You need a dark shot of reality. Is she your girlfriend now? My kids, I never wanted them to be a part of this. And all because of you. I just want to leave, man. OK, so go ahead and leave. What started as three episodes in the field became the in-studio television event. We have some unfinished business. Sparking an entire season of healing. Did you go for the person, the penis, or the promise? I was holding on to the promise. These men, collectively, have 87 children with 50 different women. It's time for brothers to start fathering each other. So four children. Four children. How many mothers? Four different ones. And you got a baby on the way. That's his mother. Oh, Jesus. His father died when he was seven. He tried to commit suicide when he was 17. If you are empty, you're going to fill it with emptiness. If you are wounded, you're going to fill it with woundedness. And we have got to get healed. I used you as a container for my rage. Please forgive me. You've got to do your work. This is my story sitting in tears. It was like nothing else I've ever witnessed on TV. Every man needs to see this. It was honest, open dialogue. We call ourselves men, but we make boy decisions. It's not about fault, it's responsibility. Somebody bring me my son. Forgive me. And tonight, fathers. Jay's son is here. Are you ready for a child? Mothers. Go to your son. What happened when you got home? children. What can he do to make it better now? The explosive mega fix conclusion. Until we heal, the pattern is perpetuated. Next. What started out as a show about one man and 34 children by 17 different women has now morphed into a national conversation about an unnatural epidemic men leaving their children and their, the mothers of those children behind. Unnatural epidemic that we accepted as a normal way of life. I think what we saw in the studio over the past two weeks was open heart surgery. <laughs> but what we didn't do was the blood workup, the family history, the stress test to see if there were other existing conditions. Right now, we are in recovery from the open heart surgery. Welcome to the recovery room. <laughs> However, what I want you to understand is that the healing hasn't even begun. You still on anesthesia, high on pain meds. <laughs> the healing begins now, and that's what we're here for today. All of the men are here. Jay is here, Ryan, John, Jumani, Terrence, and Nathaniel. Also back with us tonight is my dear friend, Jeff Johnson, who has been... <laughs> Jeff is a youth advocate, a, a, a news commentator, and a father who had to reunite with one of his children. And Ryan is here with his mother, Deborah, and his fiancée, Shatara. What happened when you got home? Well, he, he went back to school. He's in the uh, master's program. And we both realized that this was much bigger than us. And one of the things that came to me is, I wish I had been able to do this with my mother and my father. And what has changed for you between you and Ryan, because that was your open heart surgery. God knows you, you awaken mothers all over this planet 
when you made that classic statement, I made you a container for my rage. Um, were, you, were you aware of that prior to getting here? Yes. I felt shame. I felt relieved. I felt a sadness that I can't even describe. To be able to say it or to say it out that loud? I got that and I passed it on. Okay. I'm intelligent, I'm educated, and in a logical world, you would say, well, that happened to me, so I'm not going to pass it on, but I did. How has it been different for you, Ryan? You know, um, realizing that I broke a lot of promises. It wasn't just with the mothers of my children. It's with women that I've come into contact with over the lifespan of 25 years. And I can honestly say, not just the conversations that I had with my fiance, but the mothers of my children realizing, like my mother said, yeah, I'm in my master's program, that's great. But they helped me get through my master's program. How so? Because if it had not been for them taking care of my children, none of that would have been possible. Because I, 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 I hear that. I really, I really hear that. And this, I, I'm calling women on this, because I want to understand how a 25-year-old man with four children has the time to get a master's degree. <laughs> you know where I'm going, right? Uh, so I'm going to give it to you so that it doesn't sound harsh coming out of my mouth. I appreciate the fact that you acknowledge your children's mothers. Yeah. Um, and I think that's an important step. But you didn't then say what you do different. And so, Acknowledging that they're there to help you get your master's only means something when you take a step and say, what am I doing differently over the course of my incredibly busy week to be for them more, to honor the time that they're there, to allow me to do what I'm doing? And if you don't do that, then ultimately the acknowledgement doesn't mean anything. So the question becomes, in your healing process, what do you need to do differently for the children? You know, I've started counseling. I FaceTime my children every morning. I start my day and let them know that they can start their day with daddy. And honestly, the biggest step that I've taken is sitting my fiance down and saying, you know, we're getting married and, I, and I'm loving that. But how does it feel to know that I may have to go home and be with my babies after we get married? That was gonna be my next conversation. <laughs> You, you and Ryan already have one child. Yeah. And you're about to have another one. And he has three others. Are you in good relationship, Ryan, with the other mothers of your children? Yes, and it's getting better daily. Um, my youngest daughter's mother. That's probably been one of the hardest relationships that we've really had to work on fixing and healing. We sat down for two and a half hours yesterday. And I said, I'm sorry for breaking my promise to you. She sat, she cried, she sat, she cried, and I didn't leave. Like most times I have. Left her with her own pain. And I said, you know what? You're not a victim, but I'm sorry. We have to move forward from this, but at the end of the day, if you don't receive the help that you need as well as myself, our daughter will continuously be affected by this. Well, one of the things that we have to look at is what did the child marinate in in the womb? So you and Jay have a, 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 a child together. How, Ryan, how, Ryan. I'm Ryan, Lord. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> you, and, you and Ryan already have a child. You and Ryan have one child. Who is how old? He's three. Three. So what is the promise Ryan represents to you? The promise that he will be a great husband and a great father to our children. Okay. Can I ask a question? No heat, no judgment, really. What is your vision for who you are and are becoming as a woman? What's your vision? A woman who has made mistakes. A woman, That's your vision? Well, I'm saying, I just, let me talk. I'm a woman who has made mistakes, but 
I see myself as a caring person. Uh, I'm nurturing. I love children. Um, I genuinely love Ryan. I genuinely love his children. When me and Ryan met, he had already had his first daughter. Okay, take a breath. I, you don't have to defend yourself to me <laughs> at all. Here's what I mean when I say vision to another woman. I'm asking you, what do you see for yourself, from yourself, of yourself, as you look down the path of your life? I'm, me being strong and secure. And you want to spend your life force, life energy doing what? Teach. I teach. You want, you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. Are you a teacher now? Yes. Okay. How does having two children support you in advancing your vision at this time in your life? How does it? Um, can you break it down for me, please? Why you got two babies with a man you ain't married to? at 27. Because here's what I heard Ryan say last week. I forgive myself for hating women because you hurt me. That's what he said to his mother. So I want to know how did that hatred, how did that imbalance show up in his relationship with you? Because it had to. Well, yeah, because he, there was unfaithfulness in our relationship. Oh, and you of had course. a baby. Yes. Uh -huh. What else? Um, dishonesty yeah. and not meaning I love you when saying I love you and taking steps before we knew that either one of us were ready but being comfortable living in that moment being selfish not realizing or me not realizing the impact that I would have on having multiple children with him. So no heat no judgment hear the question elder to junior as a demonstration to the world what were you thinking? Thinking that everything would, would be okay. Um, but Ayanla, yes. what I want to see from Ryan is as much aggressive movement to help her crystallize that vision as he does his. Right. Because my challenge is something's not happening when you getting a master's degree, and she doesn't know what it means when Yana asks what her vision is. That's a problem. And, and so, so that's, that's a problem. A problem. Be because if, if you all are going to be a couple and a union, your vision can't be bigger than hers. Right. Collectively, your vision has to come together. And if you aren't as aggressive as who she was created to be, as she is for you, she's not your wife, she's a maid that takes care of your children. She'll be that. She'll be that. When you tell your son disparaging things about his father, the child will begin to believe that is true about him. Jay's son, Jay West is here, 24. You now you're expecting your first child. Yep. Not married. Not married, no. John is back with his wife, Jamie. And John has 11 children with seven different women. All seven of the women are here tonight. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much for being here. So what have you gotten out of the last couple of weeks of our shows that you've been watching? Any one of the mothers? I'm Penelope, and that's my son over there, um, Damon. Um, had him when I was 17. And when, what's the young man's name down there? Ryan. He kept Ryan. When his mother said that he was the container for everything, and I'm here today, and my son didn't know that I was going to do this, but I have to apologize to him. Because that Ask was. Ask him for forgiveness. Go to your son. Okay. Stand no up, beloved. <laughs> And hold on one second. Go to your son. Will you forgive me for every time that I unloaded on you because I had a bad day and I didn't know how to let it go and I unloaded on you. And I just want you to forgive me. 
and I love you. I forgive you. Like Do you really? Yes. <laughs> I've been. Did you? Did she unload on you? Yes. And how did it make you feel in the process? Horrible. Tell her. Terrible. Um, because the, part of the thing about forgiveness is not just talking about what happened, what you did and what you didn't do. The real power of forgiveness is letting somebody know how it made you feel in the process. Tell them, unloading on me made right. me feel. Unloading on me made me feel horrible. Calling me out my name, the B word, you ain't you just like your daddy. It resonated deep. And growing up, I didn't know how to respond to it other than the way I went about it. Which Cur was? Cursing back at you or flaring up, poking my chest out, running away, or whatever I felt that I needed to do to just get out the house. I didn't want to be at home. I didn't want to wash dishes. Felt like I was a maid when I was trying to be a man. And it was like, you never said, did you have homework? Or how was your day at school? Or I love you, son. You know what I'm saying? I can count on and you right. one <laughs> hand how many times. We have hugged, or how many times I have heard, I have loved you. Stand behind him. I want him to know you got his back this time. Uh, and I'm going to stand with you, mama. As a kid, I was by myself. And it was nobody there to teach me how to be a man. And now that makes me feel what? It makes me feel... Broken? Broken. Well, I was broken. Can I, can I offer something yeah. to you? Here's what I want you to get on behalf of every mother raising a son. When you tell your son disparaging things about his father, even if that he ain't this, he ain't that, he ain't going to do this, he ain't going to do that, simply by virtue of the nature of human connection, the child will begin to believe that is true about him. He'll begin to believe that. Did you believe that? Yep. That you were what? Just like my father. I want you to look at your son and tell him what you heard him say. About I heard you say that I hurt you and that I needed to be there for you more. Demina heard you when you said that, and, and I was the name calling, um, the putting you down. Um, I heard all that, and I know that because I was coming from a place, not just with your father. No excuses, it don't matter. It's, it, it, it's not. It is an excuse. He needed to see your eyes light up when he walked in the room. He needed to know that he was number one on your list. You need to tell him, I failed you. I did. I failed you. I tell failed him. you. Yeah. I failed you, Demar. I'm sorry. No, you're not sorry, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. So here's what I want to do. I want to offer the two of you together a scholarship to my forgiveness course. And I want you all to do the work together. <laughs> do it together. OK? Sit down. He failed you. You did. 17 years old. You walked away without even a care. And I had to deal with that on a daily basis, of raising him without a father, when you should have been there. And it made me feel what? I was, I was hurt. I mean, upset. I was broken. And I all took of that. that out on your son, on our son. I took that on our son. Yeah. Forgive me for being a broken man and lying down with you and, and making a child such a great son and running off and saying, not even that, not being there, I even said he wasn't mine. Yeah, you did. I said he wasn't mine. So forgive me for saying that. Forgive me for not being there to teach him about fatherhood and being a man and keep him from your rage and your wrath and speaking down to him as a man and belittling his manhood, forgive me for that. And forgive me ex definitely for not being there for him because he adapted this thing as, I'm gonna be just like my dad. And it hurts me to my heart when I hear him tell me that all the time. And I never knew where he got it from because I'm like, no, you don't wanna be like your dad. So forgive, I forgive you and you forgive me for even allowing that to even manifest in his, in his spirit. 
You have yeah. children? Yes. How many? Five. How many women? Four. I just have to sit down. What are you asking of your father I'm today? I'm to be consistent. Be there. Even if I make the wrong decisions, be there, daddy. Be there for me. Forgive me for not being there to teach him about fatherhood and being a man and keep him from your rage and your wrath and speaking down to him as a man. What is it like for you to hear your parents have a conversation about you? It's different yeah. and it's uplifting to hear them speak because I, I heard them talk but never about me. Ooh. In 27 years, I never heard my parents discuss me. Never. What do you need from her for your healing process to continue? Basically, she gave me what I've been looking for for all these years. Which That's is? the apology I've been looking for. And what do you need from your father? Come on, stand up to man to man. Mama, go sit. I'm going. Thank you. <laughs> from my father, I just need constant advice, you know, to get me through my troubles, you know, to help me deal with the mothers of my children, you know. You have been, children? Yes. How many? Five. <laughs> you want to be like a dad? No heat, no judgment. I just have to sit down. <laughs> Five children. How many women? Four. What is that about for you? It's hard because I'm dealing with so many different personalities, so many different women, so many different, different kids. They want so much, and I can only do as much as I'm able to do. That's exactly the conversation your mother had when she was raising you. He wants so much, but I can only do this. Sit there with your son for a minute. Jay's son, Jay West, is here. 24? Now you are expecting your first child. Yep. Not married? Not married, no. And you lived this? Meaning? You lived being? Being around? Yes. My father not being married, having 40 kids. Yeah, I've been around. I, w I wouldn't say that's the reason why I'm not married. I mean, I'm not married because I'm just, I, I don't feel care like about married. married. I care about, are you ready? to bring a child into this world? Are you in a healthy relationship with a woman who has a vision, who shares your vision, whose vision you support? Me and my girl, you know, we see eye to eye on pretty much everything. We Are you ready that. for a child? That I mean, I never had a enough. child, so I can't say I'm ready. I, I don't think nobody was ready to have a, have a kid. I'm pretty mm, sure. I don't know about that. You know what I mean? I'm Are you sure at 24? I'm not everybody in here planning to have a kid. Are you at 24, at the place in your heart, mind, life, soul, mm -hmm. ready to be committed to the evolution and the raising of another life on this planet? I am, definitely, yeah. Okay. Definitely. So you're going to be a grandfather? Uh, for the third time. Do you see any of yourself in him? Um, honestly, um, I don't, and I'm going to tell you why. I feel as though that I have uh, demonstrated such a poor representation of a father and a provider and a man. He's actually having his first child when he's 24 years old, and uh, by the time I was 25, probably was you know going on number 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 nine. I didn't give him a blueprint. It's the bottom line. Okay, Jeff, I, I wanted to ask because you said you're ready to have, to be a father. What does that mean? I mean, I feel like it just means that I'm just ready to, to literally give that child my time and energy over anything else. So if I could ask you this, what are the three things that you've done in the last month to prepare for this child? Um, I would say uh, saving money. That's one thing. Two, um, I've been 
really, really um, thinking about myself and where I'm at mentally and how I could conduct myself better when the baby does come. Why the baby's in my girl's stomach, even now, I'm still trying to, you know, make our relationship better. What do you feel like your baby is going to need most from you? She's going to need me to, to be there for her financially, emotionally. What your daughter needs most from you when she comes out is for you to hold her. She needs to hear your voice in a tender way, talking to her and her mother. She's not gonna understand what it means for you to make money. She only understands what you do when you get home. And so you can make more money than anybody in the world and hold it down. But if your baby doesn't have her daddy there Connection. to make her feel safe, Safety is it, bro. That's it. Daughters and sons want to feel made safe by their daddy. Out of order. Don't open your mouth. Your upset is with him. Don't go after her. This is LaShonda, and her and John had a son together who was shot and kill at the age of 20. And my understanding was that you felt John was partially responsible for that. And I do. And that there's a breakdown between you and John and Jamie as John's wife. Yeah. Because I feel like the women play a part in their lives. When you have so many kids and you're the wife, you have all these kids that you have to support as well. And I felt like she didn't do that, and John didn't either. I mean, it's like they left me. You know what I'm saying? I felt like John left me. When my son got killed, I did everything by myself. You understand me? I don't care what marriage he has. You sit at that funeral home with me. You help me make arrangements for my son. Well, did you, have you ever had that conversation no, with him? No, because, so OK, this that. is our son. You know our son is deceased. We talked. You were there Talk at the crime him, scene. Talk to him, not about him as opposed to telling him what he did and didn't do. Well, I'll rephrase Talk to that. him about that. how it felt for yes. you. You hurt me to the core, and Jamie, you did as well, because you played a part in this, too. Oh. Because, can I finish? Thank you. Mm -hmm. You play a part in this as well, because that's your who, husband. Who are you talking I'm to? I'm speaking right? to Jamie. No, I'm no, 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 to her. no, 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 out of order. Hold up. Don't open your mouth. Out of order. OK. Your upset is with him. Don't go after her. I'm not going to. And if you have, wait a minute. And if you have something to say to her, then you speak that to her. But you haven't cleared the upset with the, the child's father. That's where you got to clear your upset, beloved. And if you give me a chance, I will. Well, I would ask you to take a breath. OK. And pump your brakes. OK. And take a little of the heat off of mm -hmm. it. If you could do that. Yeah. Tell him how you feel. Felt. Well, I, I was hurt, you know. That, that's our son. And you hurt me when you wasn't there for me, and you wasn't there for him. That hurt having to go to the funeral home by myself to make arrangements for my son. That hurt me. For you not to even contribute a dime to our son's funeral, that hurt me. You understand me? I had to do it because I made sure he was going to be buried properly because I'm his mother. Prior to that, tell him what it is that you knew well, him for. Prior to, be, it, when Devontae was 16 years old, you know that I gave you custody of our son. And I gave you custody of our son because I felt like he's growing up, he needed you. At the age of 16, was he in good, consistent relationship with his father? Uh, no. Okay. No. But even though he wasn't in good, consistent relationship with his father, you thought it was a good idea to give his father custody of him when you couldn't handle it. Well, you know what? I'd rather give it to, a, to his asking, father. I'm asking. Yes, no, and I'm saying no that. Judgment. His, this is his father. Okay. Why shouldn't I? You couldn't Why handle it. Why shouldn't I? I'm asking the question. Okay. Don't, you don't have to come after me. Okay. I'm trying to get to the because bottom. I, I, what I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm upset. Because? because? Me? I'm like a thousand, a million women out here. And we work every day to take care of these kids. We do everything we have to do for these kids. And these men just skate. And we lay down with we men and we don't protect ourselves. We lay down with men and we don't protect 
Dr. I have not said so that I didn't. I don't, I I don't, I don't I did. want to badge of courage and for not, the mistakes that not, I've made. And, and it's not. It's not like okay. that. Okay. Yeah, it's but you know, like but, but this is not about they do, I do, we do. This is about 28 year old men mm -hmm. who got five children That's right. because their hearts are broken. Mm -hmm. It's about women seeking ad, uh, validation right. in the bed with a man. Mm -hmm. right. It's about us being broken. Right. Absolutely. And looking for somebody else to fill us up. Absolutely. That's what this is about. And I understand Not that. about you taking care of the child that you had with a man when you didn't have a condom or a pill or something. <laughs> we all have to take responsibility because the children are suffering. suffering. And I do, I do. The children. I, I do. So at this point, you telling him about a funeral, you telling him about a bill, about whatever is of no consequence I, whatsoever. But do you understand, understand that the depth yes. of your hurt and anger yes. sends ripples out and touches everybody mm -hmm. in your life? Mm -hmm. What about mm -hmm. your other children? Yes, and I, I love on them. I, when, I, when I lost my son, I loved on my kids tremendously. Okay, tremendously. But they don't want your behavior, baby. They want your heart. And they have it. They they have it. Both of them. Both of my girls. You're also in relationship with his daughter. Yes. Would that be yes. you? Yeah. You're in relationship with Portia. Yes. And are you in breakdown with your dad also, Portia? I've been in breakdown with my dad all of my life. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's been. My father has, and I'm I'm gonna be honest. My father was very inconsistent. I felt like he should have been there more than what he was because I was around. I was the one who stayed directly down the street from him. I was the one who was a house over. I felt like he should have been there. I felt like as a woman, because I'm 27, we're all the same age. All three of you. Yeah, we're all 27. I felt like as a woman, that he should have been there more for me. Because to this day, and I'm, I'm being very honest, I have trust issues with men. I do. That's the reason why I won't be in a relationship right now, because I'm still working on me. And do because, you work? And because I have to heal with him. I love my daddy. I do. I love you. And I forgive him for everything he's done to well, me. Well, what has he done? What I done? I was... <laughs> I'm literally. I forgive you I for. I forgive you for not being there when I needed you to be there. When I needed you to show up, you weren't there. No matter how much you got into it, my mother, I felt like you should have been there. What can he do to make it better now? I what just... can he do to make it better now? I... Come, baby. Come here. He, he can't give you back your childhood. He can't go to the game. He can't come to the field. What can he do? And this is the same thing that some of you may want to do with some of these children's <laughs> mothers. Say, I wasn't there, and I disappointed you, or I wasn't who you wanted me to be, or whatever. What can I do to make it better right now, today? What are you asking of your father I'm today? I'm asking him to be consistent, Look, to be, um, be consistent in my life. Whenever we have an argument, I don't want you to run away because you don't agree with what I'm saying to you. I want you to always say, be there. Even if I make the wrong decisions, be there, daddy. Be and, there for me. And what are you going to do different to allow him to be there? I'm going to make sure I communicate with you. Okay. I'm giving you this opportunity because I love you enough to do this. All right, hug your daddy. Ready, to? Because of your attitude and you just lied early on and you broke the I, I, promise. I lied. What, you broke the promise it wasn't early always on. Me. What, if she, what if she walked away from me? Can I say something? And 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 this is, I think, for most of us, and for most men who have children that they don't live with. I think without question, the, the thing that hurts us the most is a lack of consistency. And so as men. We know we going to work every day. We know we struggling to raise this money. We have a problem because most courts define fatherhood as did you pay child support? Yes. I don't see any court saying how much time did you spend with your kid?
we have to own that our lack of consistency creates women who in many cases are simply defensive about subjecting their children, our children, to inconsistency. And, and I live with that myself. And it's, and it's about honoring your word as men. John, come back here for me, because I, I just want to have a quick conversation. Can I ask conversation. one question about what he just said about consistency? OK. What if, when you are being consistent, there is division? There's division. Because my mistake that I made, and I own it, to not be there for these two young boys right here, which are great young men, and not because of none of my doing, but I regret the times of not being there, being there with them. It's because of my own hurt inside me that hurt me that stopped me from doing that. But when I re realized that hurt and got over it and wanted to be that father that I should be, and when I tried to do it and I was stopped, what do you do then? What do you mean I, I was stopped? Stopped by who? Mothers. So, so it's, it's like, wait a minute. It's, it's like we, we, have a, we have a free highway, right? There's a highway that's in front of us the day that our children are born. And ain't nothing on that highway. Ain't no cars on it, nothing. We got the ability to drive straight. We drive 10 miles off the road, right? We drive 10 miles off the road. And then mad that it's potholes trying to drive back to the road. We the one that drove 10 miles off the road. And so that, I'm, not, I'm not taking anything off of the fact that I think that there are women that don't know how to deal with their anger, don't know how to deal with their frustration. I'm not saying that that doesn't exist. But as men, we have to acknowledge that we drove off the road. Now that we do care about the potholes, we can't say, oh my God, it's her fault that the potholes were there because we, we are the ones that drove off. And so I think that's what challenges our consistency. I've been there before. I know that I disengaged at times because I just didn't want to deal with her. Yeah. This attitude is getting on my nerves. All right, I'm not calling. She crazy. I'm not calling. <laughs> but, but, but wait a minute. I'm the one that set that up. But see, right? the thing is, here's the piece that you got to understand. Right. And, and we, do, as the moms, a lot of times, we don't get the opportunity to walk away. This is what I was saying to you last week. That's not fair. <laughs> Name one of my kids that I walked away from. I don't know you that well. I, right. I, I haven't, <laughs> I didn't, I haven't and, walked and away from anybody. I am not accusing no, you I'm not of saying walking you did, away. But I'm just saying, in general, I haven't walked anybody that knows me. That I cut hair at home for seven years just to give moms a break from having to call off to take kids to dentist appointments, doctor's appointments, this, you know, so but they didn't have to take that care. I'm not problem. I, 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 but I did that. So and then I, I raised but quite a few of my children do. in the home while I worked. I, you know what I'm saying? So I, I did the same, I do the same thing mothers do. I do okay. the same exact thing. Okay, so your so point is. How come I still have to, you know? Because of your attitude, and I mean, I, I get what he's saying as well, but you know, with some some moms, because they just... you lied early on and you broke the I, promise. I, I lied. What, you broke the promise but it early on. Me. What, if she, what if she walked away from me? Well, then she Am broke I still the her promise. promise. Yes. Because she walked. Yeah. The bottom line is how we create relationships is dysfunctional. We go into relationships not even knowing, in some cases, the depth of our brokenness, and we're looking to the other person to heal it. And by the time we realize, oh my God, this person is bro more broke than me, you're pregnant. That's a problem. That's a problem. What, what are we learning about the importance of fathers in our children's lives? What did you learn? I learned that even though John was not physically and mentally able to take care of him, I should have let him do it because I could not do it on my own. Even though he had the support of another man in his life, he needed John. What, is the, what would the importance of a father have been in your life? I really don't know. Because you didn't have Exactly. Yeah. I was... Um, when I was a kid, I was numb to a father. And how have you healed that? I haven't. What about you? Are you all right? Hmm? I'm getting there. Are you all right right now? Right now? Who in here knows that they're not all right? Can I offer you just friendly sure. coaching? 
tell yourself the absolute truth about what you feel moment to moment and have the courage to share that with your husband because I've been uh, watching yeah. your face. What you going to yeah. do different? Yeah, and I have. You know, that is where this healing is going to start. You've got to look at your broken places. Look at your broken places. Not excuse them, not try to fix them, not you got to just look at your broken places and then understand where that break is bleeding into your life. Because if you got a break, it's bleeding somewhere. And then don't just do pain management. Be willing to do the surgery. And the way that you do that surgery is tell the truth about what you feel, not about what they did or what happened. Tell the truth about what you feel. I feel broken. I feel crazy. I feel weak. I feel less than. I feel stupid. I feel lost. I feel hungry, whatever. Tell the truth about what you feel and stop pointing fingers and blaming about what people did and didn't do. My father wasn't there, and as a result, I feel like nobody will ever accept me as I am. And I've got to prove who I am by doing so much and giving so much. That's why I sleep around. I just want a man to accept me because my father didn't. That's the truth. Tell it. And then forgive. I, 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 I just have to keep saying it over and over. And let me tell you when you know when you're forgiven, when you no longer have to tell the story. <laughs>